Now in our electric motorcycle conversion process, there's something we don't want to overlook. And it's kind of easy to because we so take it for granted. And that is, where does the 12 volt electricity for the motorcycle's headlight, turn signals, and other accessories come from? Because think about it, on a typical gasoline or diesel car or motorcycle, uh, it's just there. You don't have to think about it at all. But what's really going on behind the scenes is the fossil fuel is running the engine and that runs a generator or alternator which produces the 12 volt electricity which goes to the battery. The battery is really just a little temporary holding unit uh, for starting the vehicle with the electric starter but all the energy for that battery is really coming from the generator. Now on an electric motorcycle there is no engine and there's no alternator so where do we get those 12 volts? Well you might think, let's just use the 12 volt battery that's already on there. And that's actually one way you could do it. Uh, all you would need would be a separate 12 volt charger to go to that battery. I've got a couple of uh, sample batteries here. Um, typically a motorcycle battery is not too big, maybe a little bit larger than this, but uh, not as big as this one. Now the trouble with that is this battery right here is only 7 amp hours. Now let's say your typical sealed beam headlight is going to be 55 watts. Let's round it to 60 to make the math come out real nice and even. If you're running a 60 watt bulb, you can divide that by the 12 volt system to get how many amps it's going to be drawing, which is going to be 5, 5 amps. Now if you've got a 7 amp battery, that's going to be able to run 5 amps for just over an hour doesn't sound so bad if you're uh, not out for long rides anyways. However, um, you're really going to eat up the life of this battery. These are just not designed to be charged and drained, charged and drained the way a good deep cycle battery is. Also, when you're pulling at a higher amperage, uh, you're going to pull all that juice through there faster than you would otherwise. For example, on here, it says that it's rated for 7 amp hours, but at the 20 hour rate. So, if you were draining this slowly over a period of 20 hours, you'd get those uh, full 7 amps, but if you were draining this in only one hour, you're going to get less than that. So you might not even be able to run your motorcycle headlight for an hour on this battery. Now on the other hand, this one is an 18 amp hour battery, so you'd be able to run that headlight for considerably longer. Um, on the other hand, you know, it's starting to get kind of big, kind of heavy. There's not a lot of room in the motorcycle anyways. So wouldn't it be great if there was some other way of getting that 12 volt power. Well, another way you could do it is just to take 12 volts from one of your traction batteries. Um, this is, is, is very simple, uh, but it's not necessarily the best way. Uh, for example, what happens then is typically your vehicle is going to have a grounded frame. So the battery negative is going to go to the frame of the cycle, and then the positive uh, comes back to the, the battery here through the lights, the turn signals, accessories, everything like that. Uh, however, that also means that your 48 volts is potentially connected to the frame of your motorcycle. This is just asking for trouble. It's not what you want to do. I would say to uh, absolutely avoid doing it that way. Uh, another way to do it is you could actually use higher volt bulbs, uh, buses and airplanes, uh, some other vehicles like that. Do you use systems higher than 12 volts, and instead of a 12 volt headlight, they'll have a 24 volt headlight. But your motorcycle is already designed for 12 volts, so it makes the most sense just to use 12 volts. But wouldn't there, it'd be great if there was some way you could get 12 volts from the 48 or 72 or whatever is actually powering the motorcycle down the road. And there actually is something that does that. Let me introduce to you the DC to DC converter. In this case, uh, physically it's rather small. It's about two inches square, not very thick at all. And this one is designed to input 36 to 75 volts and output 12 volts. And it'll do that 12 volts at a little bit more than eight amps, more than enough to run our headlight, our turn signals, and anything else we need as an accessory on the motorcycle. But think about this how physically small this is and lightweight compared to a battery. And plus, we never have to recharge it. We just recharge the 48 volt batteries and this always has power available to it. So all you need to do is wire this up between the 48 volts of batteries and then the output of this is going to go with the negative to the frame of the cycle 
and the positive to the fuse panel the exact same way that the original battery did. In fact, you actually still can keep the original battery. You just want to wire this up in parallel to that original battery, and it'll always keep that battery topped off for you. Now in the case of my motorcycle, the DC to DC converter is installed under the seat right near the fuse panel. Um, takes up little space and little weight, and the headlight turn signals, all that is always ready to go.